Hip-hop is 1987.com. When you put up the first and third quarters up against the second and the fourth, what do you see there in comparison? I mean, we, we, we started both the game and the second half with energy, and you need that when you're on the road. You need that when it's back-to-back, -back, and you especially need it when you're playing the Atlanta Hawks at home. And, uh, you know, we, we got it to two with about 340 left in the third, and we just couldn't hold on. You know, we really, we really just couldn't hold on. And I give them credit. They're athletic. They share the ball. They move. They made shots. And um, the second and the fourth were far different than the uh, first and the third. At that fifth. point, I'm sorry. At that point right there, that was the game. I mean, right. you got it to two, and then I think they went on a 14 to four run, yeah. and then you guys got it within 10 twice. I mean, 10, 10 twice. Yeah. But that was the game. I agree with you. And. You know, we'll go back and look at the tape and be able to point to more reasons, specific reasons why that happened. My gut feel without having seen it is that when, when we, we get it stuck, you know, it's not like we're boasting um, uh, elite multiple scorers. We have to do whatever we do by committee. It's got to be done by team. We got to move the ball. You got to play that other side of the floor. And we just did not do that. I thought that Jaleel Lokafor uh, had a great game tonight. Uh, you, you know the four minute chunks that we've been giving him, we, we extended that. I was going to spend my money all to try to get back in this, knowing that we may not have him at the end, but I felt like the game would leave us otherwise. And I thought he strung some consecutive minutes where he looked fluid, it looked like his conditioning was better, and I thought Jaleel played very well tonight. And I know you want to look at it, but Atlanta, 50 points in the paint, 39 from deep. Where were, defensively, where were the breakdowns? I think some of it happened with the 19 turnovers. I think some of our offensive struggles, getting back in transition defense because of the turnovers, hurt us. Uh, I think that without like Joel and some level of a rim protector, you, you get punished when it does get into the paint. Um, they historically have been a hard matchup for us. I think their athleticism and their speed and their ability uh, to shoot, like they really can shoot threes and they're unselfish. And so the combination of like, you know, no sort of Joel, a legitimate rim protector, and you know, some turnovers that led to their transition, I think uh, produced the margin that we're now looking at. Thank you guys. Hip Hop is 1987. We're out here with Sixers own Jale Ogafer. You had a big game tonight, 18 points. It seemed like every time you were in the in the paint, you were dominating in the paint. Can you talk to me a little bit about your performance and your matchups when uh, you were going up against Dwight Howard and Paul Millsap? I really don't want to talk about my individual performance. Uh, we got we got beat by 20. Um, obviously, the Hawks are a really good team, but we got beat by 20. So uh, that's what we're all frustrated here about. And. They beat us by a decent margin every time we play them. So they're just credit to them. They're a really good team, but we have things we have to work on to get to their level. I know you're coming off of a back-to-back, -back, although you didn't play last night. Can you talk to me about the energy of that game and, and uh, how difficult it may have been coming off uh, the back-to-back -back and being such, uh, being short, excuse me, on with your roster? Yeah, uh, I'm sure it was difficult. Like you said, I didn't play last night, so I, I felt good. I felt fresh. I know some of the other guys were a little tired, legs were a little banged up. You know, we play against uh, teams and we leave right out and fly here last night, we did here late, late at night last night, and then we had to play today. So it's tough, uh, but it's what we signed up for, and uh, that's no excuse to why we lost today. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks, man. What uh, well, was the, kind of the key to, because as the game went on, you guys got better and better and better. Yeah, I think it's just limiting turnovers. You know, uh, that was the main the main goal. You know, going into the second quarter, limit turnovers for us, and uh, create turnovers for them. And uh, uh, let's keep pushing, keep driving, and just keep being aggressive. So what's the big difference for you this year? Combination of it. What's what's been the difference so far for you? Um, I think it's just you know just trusting the uh, the process and trusting the coaching staff here. Uh, even though I didn't play last season, I I knew uh, I had to keep working, keep grinding uh, every single day, and uh, make sure I was working with the with the assistant coaching staff and the and the trainers here over the summer to get my game right and get in shape and be a better 
player and be a more mature player at that. So uh, I think that's just helping me out tremendously. Thank you. It's something that we got to keep up. Six double-digit scores tonight, almost a seven. I mean, do you just get the feeling that this team can come at opponents in waves? Uh, yeah, you know, but the biggest thing is defense and rebounding. You know, those are the two big areas that we have to continue to focus on. Uh, we want to be uh, the best defensive team, and we want to be, you know, top five in rebounding. You know, um, and it starts with myself and Paul and the bigs. We got to do a good job every night of making sure we box out and rebound and hold teams to one shot. And I think by doing that every single night, it will give our guys like Cal and Bays and Dennis an opportunity to get out and uh, get up the floor. So just something that we got to continue. To do. I wanted to ask you about one play. Uh, you took an alley -oop from Malcolm. Mm -hmm. and he just kind of all he did was nod at you. Oh uh, well. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, Malcolm's, a, you know, he reads the floor well. Um, it's something that, you know, uh, we work on in practice and stuff like that. But, you know, we see teams, the way they're playing defense, you know, we try to, uh, you know, not force things, uh, but, you know, find the right spots uh, in, in the offense and get easy shots. And uh, he found me on a good play. But how long does that take to kind of It takes time. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes film. It's all the stuff that we do on a daily basis, uh, which is going to make us better. I don't think we, we've come close to where we can be as a team, <clears throat> but one thing I can say is this group is hungry, uh, and uh, coaches is holding us accountable every single day to get better, continue to grow as a team, and we want that. You know, I think all of us, uh, we we want to win really bad. It starts like I've been saying all year in practice in the weight room, just all the little things that you know people don't see. You know, uh, that's where it starts. <clears throat> Hey, can I ask you when you come here, how much different this player development and, mm -hmm. and training staff was to previous places you've been to? <clears throat> totally different, or? Uh, it's, it's, it's the best. It's the best. Um, you know, I'm so grateful uh, to be in this situation. Um, They've done an amazing job, the training staff, the coaching staff. Uh, Bud has done an amazing job. Uh, we have a, a growing relationship that's, that's been great so far. We're really understanding each other. And, uh, you know, it's good. You know, I love having him as a coach. Uh, from the first time I met him till now, we've had a great connection. And we want to continue that. And, uh, you know, I love you know how he holds me accountable you know, every single day, you know, to be the guy for the team to, you know, lead them in the right direction. Direction. Uh, when I'm not doing the right things, he's on me. Uh, when I am doing the right things, it you know, pushes me to do more. And uh, it's just a great feeling. Can you comment on the contribution of the bench, uh, Chris Humphrey? Oh, man. Chris, Tabo, uh, Tim, you know, our bench, you know, they come in the game and they play <coughs> with energy. And, you know, that stuff starts in practice. You know, we have the bench uh, squad that's competing every day uh, with the starters. They make us better. We make them better. And when we when they get in the game, they just take it to a whole nother level. And that's what you want to have. You want to have guys who come off the bench <coughs> who take their level of intensity higher. And they've been doing a good job. Earlier this week, uh, the Hawks did the mannequin challenge. Uh, we did? Really, really, we did? No, no, you guys didn't, but the organization did. We had oh, the with mannequins. the mannequins. Yeah, what, would you, what did you like about it and what would you like to have add to it? Uh, <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah, it was solid, but, you know, you know, you... Uh, yeah, just just tell us to come and we'll do it. You know, we don't mind being a part of that. <laughs> What's the best one that you've seen so far? Uh, one of the best ones that I saw was the R. Kelly um, remake of The Closet uh, with uh, one of the, the comedians King online. Brown. King, yeah, he did a really good job. Uh, that one was pretty dope. That's probably the best one I've seen. Um, yeah, I would go with that one. Hip Hop's is 1987.com.